My name's Darren McCray. I'm a member of the Caldwell Confederated Drugs. Uh, you're gonna see me uh, do a little shaking. You'll hear a tremor in my voice. I have Lewy body dementia. When I was 15 years old, I was in a native youth program. And I job shadowed a guy on a Spokane res named Neil Abrahamson. He taught me how to set up logging units. I also planted trees and did some tree thinning for the Spokane tribe. A little later on, I bumped nuts and cut logs for another company. I worked at a post and pole plant on the Cobble Indian Reservation in Inchalim, and I worked at a little plywood mill uh, a little south of the Canadian border here in Washington State in a town called Kettle Falls. The day before I presented at the Affiliated Tribes of Northwest Indian Conference on Global Warming at the Northern Quest Casino, I noticed the insects disappeared from around all the lights, and they're still not here. There is an article in the May 2020 issue of National Geographic that says we've lost 75% of our insects from 1990 to 2016. The Spokesman Review put me uh, on the front page of their paper about them. Uh, let's see, this is, uh, would be back at the beginning of September and August. I'm talking about the disappearance about the insects. I, but what I presented at the AT&I conference was that I noticed all the trees dying. I discovered five signs that's wrong with the pine needles. The first one is they're supposed to be forest green. They're a long ways from forest green. Uh, they're a dull green. And the reason they're so dull is because a cuticle has disappeared. That's the waxy substance that you find on leaves and needles that uh, hold in moisture and reflects the sunlight. Pine needles are supposed to come on in different parts of the branch. Not anymore. Now they come on in a circumference around the end of the branch, like uh, a chimney brush was what came to mind when I first noticed this in 2014. Last two signs. I want to share, if I wasn't from Indian country, I wouldn't have been able to understand them. I can go out and I can take a pine needle. I can take, say, eight of them. I can put them into a bunch and I can start pulling those pine needles apart in, say, quarter inch pieces from one end to the other. I can go and I can rake up a pile of needles with my hands and it doesn't take a very big area because of the amount of pine needles. I can take that pile of pine needles, I can put it between my hands and I can scrunch it and I can turn it to powder. Either that or I can bunch up a bunch of them and, uh, and um, pull them apart. So what's wrong with those last two examples? Indian country has been weaving with pine needles forever, one needle at a time. If I can pull eight apart, a person wouldn't be able to weave with just one. You can go out and you can feel a leaf, say a maple leaf, and you can feel how much more thinner uh, they have become. Pine branches are supposed to go straight out and lean down. Not anymore. Every branch on there is trying to become a leader, heading for, uh, heading for the light. These trees are dying so fast that they uh, don't have time to shed their branches. So you can go out and look at these trees, and you can see they're all dying from the ground up. These trees are all dry and brittle, but they look like they're flourishing. I can go out to any branch on any pine tree, any tree, it doesn't matter what species. And I will be showing you examples of me breaking saplings in two that you should almost be able to tie these things in a knot. Pre-industrial revolution, CO2 sat at 280 parts per million. Today it sits at 417. 
That's an increase of about 50%. That elevated levels of CO2 is forcing our vegetation to grow in an accelerated rate. Everything has a tipping point, and these trees have a tipping point. They're being forced to grow in an accelerated rate, and they don't have enough nutrients and water to sustain themselves using that type of energy to grow that way. These trees are dying so fast they don't have time to shed their bottom branches. But you can still, you can see that they're still flourishing. And you can see the tops of those uh, where every one of those branches are reaching for the sun. Um, again, you can see how many of these branches are dead. So with that, we're going to see a lot of uh, dead pine needles. And this right here is what I'm talking about. Look, look at the mat of needles, how uh, thick this is. Now this is just a little tiny area right here. And you can see. And if you would, come on, or take a look at this as well here while I'm ripping, while I'm pulling these um, uh, pine needles away from this. Take a look at these seedlings. We are, we are, um, uh, where are we at, guys? What's the date today? It's like the 2nd of October, isn't it? 2020. Pine um, seeds will germinate during the uh, winter and they'll come up in the spring when the ground is soft and they're able to establish their root system. You can look at these and you can see there's two years right there. You can see the, um, the year before and then this is the next year. And the, the, uh, notice that there's uh, just a taproot there. There's no, uh, there's no offside, uh, any roots going off to the side. And it doesn't matter. I can pull these up all day long like this. And again, that's two years of growth. Indian country wouldn't have made mats and bowls out of these things if they were going to, um, if they're going to be this brittle. You can take a look at this bark and you can tell when it started this year and you can see the year before. Right, uh, right there is when this year started. These things are growing at an accelerated rate. This is what I'm talking about with these pine needles. When I'm talking about these trees are dry and brittle, but they look like they're flourishing, this is what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter what species. It'll be a maple tree or a pine tree, hardwood, softwood, deciduous trees, conifers. Best to you guys. <laughs>